Welcome back, my friends, to the 13th and final section in this series all about the date-time objects. There's so much to get to. Let's jump right to it. Most programming languages have objects for working with dates and times. Dart is no exception to this through its date-time class. So here we have our main function in Dart. We're going to get the current date and time. We'll create an instance of date time using the datetime.now constructor. This constructs a date time instance with the current date and time in the local time zone. So here's what it looks like. We create a variable called now, which equals date time dot now. When we print now, we get the full date and time, as you see it right here. Then we can use any number of different properties. For example, we can print now dot day. We get eight for the eighth day of the month. We can do now dot month. We get eight for the eighth month of the year. We're in August. Now dot year 2020. And now dot time zone name EDT. I'm in the Eastern time zone. Now dot weekday is six, which equals Saturday. And now dot hour is 14 in military time. Okay, here we'll determine the days or hours from a particular date or time and the days and hours to a particular time. So we have our same now variable, which equals date time dot now. Let's add 50 days from this now date. So we can print now dot add new duration in days colon 50. So let's compare and contrast. We were at 2028.8 and now we're at 2029.27 and the time goes along for the ride. We can now do 50 days prior and we can do two hours from. So two hours into the future. And here we'll create a specified date time object. So we start out with a variable called y2020 and that equals date time 2020. So here we're just passing the year so it defaults to the first day and the first month and the time is all zeros across the board. Then we could specify the month and day along with the year. So here we're passing year, month and day to date time, the date time class and we come up with YMD. So YMD, as you might expect, is 2020, 8, 7. Now we can specify a date as UTC, universal time code. So we use the datetime.utc constructor. We pass it 2000, the year 2000. So we get 2000, 01, 01, all zeros, and a Z at the end. Now Z stands for time zone. We can pass ISO 8601 date. So this is where we'll use the parse static method, and this will construct a new date time instance based on the string that we pass in. So notice what my syntax is passed to this method. It's 2020 dash 01 dash 01 t 0 0 0 0 0 0 z so here are examples right here of acceptable strings different ways you can make this work you can also look at the man pages or the documentation up on the dart site for further information on this and now we can get the difference between two dates so we have two different variables now and utc same as the ones we've used in the past slides. So we'll get the difference between now and UTC. We create a diff variable UTC dot difference now. So UTC dot difference method and we pass in now. So here's where we're making use of our two different variables or our two different date time objects. So we can we can print diff dot in days. So this asks the question UTC is how many days from now and it comes back negative 7525 so we know that that's in the past because it's preceded with the negative number or it's preceded with the negative sign we can do diff dot in hours this asks the question UTC is how many hours from now we can do diff dot is negative it comes back true this wants to know if the difference is a negative number so we know UTC came before now if we haven't figured that out already we can use the abs or absolute method here we were just interested in the net days between the two we don't care if one came before the other it doesn't matter just tell me what the difference is between these two different objects now and UTC and it comes back 7525 same as our first one when we asked in days however no negative sign and finally we can take a look at the duration class a duration represents a difference from one point in time to another 
The duration may be negative if the difference is from a later time to an earlier time. So here, we're creating an instance of the duration class. So this will look very familiar to you if you've been with me all along from the class module. So duration, fastest marathon equals new duration, and then we have hours, two, minutes, three, seconds, two. We can now do some interesting stuff with that. Fastest marathon, our variable, dot in minutes. Well, you convert that to minutes, it's 123 minutes. Fastest marathon in seconds, 7,382. We can see here in the next line how long is 400 hours in days. So once again, we create an instance of the duration class. Duration, we call it how long equals new duration. We feed in hours 400, and then we simply use the in days property to get 16. We can convert it to weeks by using a little arithmetic. So how long that in days divided by seven, we get 2.285, etc. We can do the same thing to convert to months. How long that in days divided by 30.417, we get back 0 0.52 months. So a little over half a month. Duration of a long weekend, new duration, hours. My long weekend is 112 hours. So that is four days. Then we can find out if two days are equal. This may come in very handy. You can use the compare to method. It will return zero if it's equal, minus one if not. So we compare diff to a long weekend and we get minus one. A long weekend two equals new duration hours 112 and compare that to a long weekend. So a long weekend two compared to a long weekend, we get zero. Why? Because they are the same. My fine friends, thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, do a couple of things. Subscribe to the page, give me a like, leave a comment, and share this with somebody who might need it. We're trying to start a revolution here. <laughs>